Are you using your cell phone for security authentication? I have warned you about this many times, and I think now might be a time for you to start looking at other options and other solutions wherever possible. Let's go ahead and dive right on into this. Welcome back to Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so, and check if you are still subscribed if you had intended to do so. Leave us a like and a comment down there that will help in the algorithm. But today we want to talk about using your phone for security. And this is something I've talked about many times before. I don't use my phone for anything that I don't absolutely have to. And consequently, that basically means I use my phone for nothing regarding security. Contrary to popular opinion, no, you do not have to have a phone to use YouTube. I am fully in the YouTube Partner Program, and I do not have my phone connected to YouTube. You can use this thing called a YubiKey, and that takes care of all your MFA that you need to do. In fact, that YubiKey takes care of most MFA. Even if you don't want to use that, you can use something like KeePass XC. And if you're concerned about KeePass XC and your password and your MFA in the same database, Create two separate databases with two separate passwords. You can do that too. And you can take care of all of that stuff. And then you can go ahead and use your computer for most things. Now, I recognize most people have become accustomed to using their phone for everything under the sun. And so the phone has become such a part of our life. And that is intentional because the phone is the easiest to harvest all of your data from. But there comes a problem where your phone may have problems when you look at it and you say, ah, maybe I do have something to hide and maybe I do want to consider more security down the road. So let's go ahead and chat about the article I want to mention. So from Ars Technica, the loss of a popular 2FA tool puts security-minded Graphene OS in a paradox. Now, of course, I am running Graphene OX on my Pixel phone here, and I've been experimenting with that, and I like Lineage, and I think both of them have some specific advantages and disadvantages. Ultimately, I have to admit, I think Graphene OS is better. It does have a better security model. It does have a few things that make it a lot more hardened than Lineage. There's two things that Graphene OS irritates me with. Number one, I cannot disable the automatic updates. So if I have to re reboot my phone for whatever reason and it wants to push an update, it doesn't matter how much of a hurry I am, it wants to update itself. I wish I had the ability to turn that off or at least get a prompt to alert me that this is going to happen rather than just forcing. The second thing is I cannot run a custom host file on Graphene, and that does take care of some of the issues. Now, I've mitigated that strategy by utilizing a custom DNS, and the custom DNS, actually, I have to admit, itself is a better solution than I had with my host file because that is more organic. It is automatically updates itself with the latest uh, threats and the latest advertising systems and things like that, effectively meaning that my phone itself is super locked down from any advertisements, from any malicious things based on the custom DNS. Now, I could host that DNS on either a cloud server or even a local server if I want to do that, but since I'm more on the road and I wanted to save a little bit of money on that portion, I'm using and testing the next DNS system, which I will do a video about sometime in the future. That may mitigates our issue. So I'm using Graphene OS and I am not using my phone for authenticating into anything that I uh, can avoid. Actually, there's nothing my phone uses for authentication. And so the challenge that we have here is that most people are and one particular app was usable on Graphene until recently. This, of course, is Authy. Authy, of course, we also talked about about a month ago, had a serious security 
breach and a lot of information was taken including the uh the phones the, like the the emails the phone numbers and things like that and there was a, something i didn't actually pull that up i should have uh but a lot of information was pulled out of offy meaning that it was compromised now does this mean we should all jump from offy and start using google authenticator it might be more secure but i will question its privacy motives now what happened here is that they changed change probably in response to the breach to have a better security model and the better security model is locking graphene os out although graphene os says it's being locked out because google wants it locked out so this article is absolutely incredible i will put it down there and i will encourage you to read it now it starts out by saying uh sean wilden here who is a tech lead for the hardware backed security and android describes the current reality of the android based operating systems in response to the security conundrum now graphene os users recently discovered that authy had stopped working. Now, Authy is used as your MFA. Instead of Google Authenticator, if some website wants 2FA, you can tie this into your phone, and then you can use your Authy app utilizing your biometrics or whatever you want to do to verify yourself on your phone. You can get your 2FA code, and you can get into the website. It does turn out that as long as there's no hiccup in the process, Authy will continue to work, but if it has to revalidate or re-verify itself in Graphene OS, it seems as though this is going uh, to cause a problem. Even though Graphene OS has the ability to run the Play Integrity API, it still seems to be locked out of that in many instances as the, uh, uh, there was a Reddit post here, uh, somewhere there's a Reddit post, um, was described uh, was it that one i don't know it was it was in here somewhere and so what happens here is that google says it has the integrity system to verify an app and what they want to do which is really funny down here um they actually say that they're they're concerned in in wanting to uh find out if their phone is uh, oh, that's right down here. Well, then offered some hope for a future in which ROMs could vouch for their non-criminal nature to Google, noting some discussions with makers of high-quality ROMs. So Google, who, of course, has just been found to being an illegal monopoly, a.k.a. a criminal enterprise, um, wants to vouch that custom ROMs are not being used in a criminal enterprise. In other words, Google is the gatekeeper on any form of Android device. So even though we have custom ROMs, you might be locked out of using things like Authy or your banking systems or other things that want to check your root credentials. Now, as it goes on further, and Graphene OS contributed quite a bit to the article, mostly via X posts, what they're saying here is that the default in Google wants to first look for a hardware attestation key, which Graphene OS has. Graphene OS can lock its bootloader. Graphene OS has that security. It can verify what it is. And even if it can't, it has a Google Play API backup, which you can install in a sandboxed system. However, Google is blocking all those from happening. Basically, Graphene OS is coming out and saying that, number one, they have evidence that several Android phones that Google Play services work perfectly fine on will work fine, even though Graphene OS, which is a much better security hardened model and follows the entirety of the um, Google uh, verification suite, this is over here, even though graphene will pass all these tests they are still being blacklisted by google because they simply don't want people running graphene os to have verified devices and this is what's preventing offy from working and validating itself on graphene devices as of right this moment now graphene has come down later on and said that they have enough evidence that effectively like what elon musk and rumble just did suing the advertisers for colluding against uh effectively what they're alleging as conservative posts and that 
um, nonprofit advertising agency dissolved itself in response to the litigation. Graphene OS says it has similar evidence that Google is simply allowing some people in and not allowing others in, even though Graphene OS itself is technically capable of passing all of the validations. It's just that Google will not whitelist it. And they say that they want to uh, consider looking at legal uh, cases down the road. Now, as far as the attestation compatibility guidelines in Graphene OS, they have all of this posted, including the secure uh, the secure uh, uh, system. So you can, if gra- flash Graphene OS, you can then lock your bootloader, which is the first thing Google wants to look for. So previously, we were talking about Graphene OS can still be used for all of these different things, but it seems right now like Google is trying to blacklist Graphene OS according to what Graphene at least is saying. So it begs a few questions. Now, what this boils down to is if you're trying to use your device or your phone for your security models, this might mean that if you are using a custom ROM like Lineage or like Graphene or like EOS or a number of other ones, probably Calyx OS as well, then you will run into a situation, you may run into a situation where your authentication apps stop working and the only way you might be able to get back into your systems is to go through the painstaking process of handing up valid ID to your accounts, which I'm not a huge fan of, or buying yourself a separate standalone Android device, which is wholly tied into Google, which defeats the purpose of this. So what can we do in the meantime? There are actually steps that one can do. And I want to talk a little bit about these steps as we go forward. As I said before, I use on all my accounts, I use a YubiKey. It's most accounts will support the YubiKey at this point in time. If it doesn't, Make enough headaches for them where it starts to. Utilize something like KeePass XE, which can be used as a 2FA or an MFA system as well. KeePass XE can. But what you do is before you get locked out of Authy, get into all of your accounts. Buy yourself two YubiKeys. This is the older one. Buy one of the newer ones. Uh, They'll support more more codes and more things and more devices. Buy yourself a couple of these. I would recommend at least two. And then go into all of your accounts while you can still access Authy. You can still validate validate your security. Attach the YubiKeys to your various accounts and then remove the Authy from your device if you are trying to make sure you can still get into them and you are using security-minded systems like Graphene OS. And so by doing that and putting two of these in, you take one of these guys and you lock it in a safe, maybe in a security box or somewhere off site to your location. So if you happen to lose your one key, you can always get in with your secondary key. This allows you to get in and to make adjustments to your accounts, validate your accounts, and get in securely without relying on a phone. Because when you are relying on a phone, you are at this point in time relying on Google knowing exactly who you are to every nth degree. Now, reminder from the first article here we had talked about, Google wants to make sure that you're not accessing something from a non-criminal device, of course, verified by a criminal enterprise, as determined recently by the courts and their illegal monopoly scam, uh, which is very interesting. Now that applied more to um, uh, that applied more to your uh, your search engine stuff and not to the Android. But if Graphene OS is successful in this approach, they might be able to take out the exact same argument and say, "Hey, look, this is exactly what they're doing." So there is our thoughts for today. Don't use your phone security for security. It is a huge risk. You shouldn't use your phone for anything that's tied directly back to you anyway. It is a massive, massive risk to use. Not to mention, in some instances, I've been following a guy called Cash Jordan. He covers the decay of New York City. Right now, a big thing going on in New York City is people are out there with their phones and criminals are coming by and mopeds are just snatching the phone right out of your hand. It's already unlocked. They snatch it out, they get around the corner, and now they can drain your accounts because your phone is already unlocked. Now, there's fortunately a few steps that one can do to lock it down a little bit further, but still it does give a lot of access. Additionally, people are robbing um, like 
Uber drivers and things like that also stealing their phone by asking them to change the uh, change the um, uh, trip destination live on the app. And when their phone is unlocked, they're pulling out a gun and taking the phone while it is unlocked. So there are serious consequences uh, criminally, but potentially of utilizing your phone for such things, not to mention the fact that they want everything on the phone because the phone is far, far easier to harvest more data about you than your computer ever could. And so while the phone may very well have a lot of security implementations, the privacy implementations are too far out of the radar. I would recommend you use something like Lineage or uh, Linux uh, on a desktop computer or you know a laptop computer, whatever you're going to do, to access any and every account that you need. Don't use your phone for stuff like that. Use the computer. It's going to give you a lot better privacy down the road. There's my thoughts, and uh, let me know your thoughts about this, and have you experienced being locked out of Authy on a custom ROM? Uh, let me know your thoughts about all that. Once again, subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so, and if you want to have a look at my Graphene OS review, I will leave that as our trailing video, so have a look at that if you are considering a switch to Graphene OS. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.